You guys need to move. You're all hung over. Come on, just for just a second, man. Just give me a little groove. Come on, just a little bit of fucking movement, right? Dude, come on, you can't be in the front row and not move. Do you guys know this song? Can you sing it? Some of you are really too young. All right, sit down. Sit down. That's the Rolling Stones. Do you guys know the Rolling Stones? The song is called Symphony for the Devil. That song is really written about all of us. Do you want to know why? Because when you're number one for 10 years, everyone thinks you're the devil. And when you're the number one agent in your office, everybody thinks you sleep with your broker. <laughs> right or wrong? How many of you are number one in your office, number one in your state, number one in your business? Stand up. All the number ones, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. No, 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 no. No, no, give them a huge round of applause. What's up, Steph? What's up, Jill? What's up, Dan, Steve-o? And the reason why is all of you are like me and like follow-up boss. You work harder, you care more, and you're totally willing to piss everybody else off in the process. Right or wrong, guys? Now, the rest of you, how many of you in the room are highly competitive? Raise your hands really high. Highly competitive. Like so competitive, dude, you're not going to raise your hand because you already knew you, you were like second? Or are you just not competitive? What the fuck? <laughs> are you in operations? Are you a transaction manager? Raise your hand. You're not going to raise your hand at all? You're working on it? Dude. Is he competitive? We know each other. What's up with him? He's getting started. He's hung over. Dude, just, just give me the finger. <laughs> oh, I got your hands to raise. That was perfect. All right. So here's the thing. If you're highly competitive and you're in this room, it should piss you off if you're not number one. It should piss you, it should piss you off so much that you do something about it. You guys up for that? Now, they asked me to speak first, which is crazy, and then my buddy Timmy Grover is talking to you guys tomorrow, and if you think I'm insane, who has ever seen Tim Grover speak before? I'm having dinner with him tonight. I'll need a, I don't even know, a cocktail afterwards, because he's intense. But his whole thing is, the people that change the game, the people that change the world, the people that make all the money are usually really focused, maniacal, and intense. Do you guys get that? Am I at the National Plumbers Association meeting? <laughs> Let me say that to you again. The people that make all the money are maniacal, focused, and intense. Do you guys get that? You get that. Now, I'm not saying you have to be, and you can wear yellow pants and not be in Europe, and it's all good. Where are you from? Pennsylvania. Pencil are yellow pants allowed in Pennsylvania, or do you only wear those in L.A.? Right. I love it, man. They're very sharp, by the way. So here's the thing. That's super rad, but the best thing that could ever happen to me is if, oh, I guess the clicker stops working, is if this year we get named number two. I will be so pissed. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? I'm going to call Stefan Swampole and say, name us number two. I will go merge with, I don't know, Jared James. I'll buy Brian Buffini. You with me on this? Like, I'll figure it out because that's how we have to think in an environment like this, yes or no. How's the market? The answer is fucked. Oh my God, he's cursed twice already. I've already been paid. It's all good. You can write a bad review. I don't care. How's the market? Don't say it. It's interesting, right or wrong, guys. But what if I told you right now what's actually different? If you're going to take notes, this is probably the one slide you want to take a photo of. Or I'll give you guys all the slides, whatever you guys want to do. What is different, I've been doing this for like 34 years. Right, so some of you guys know my dad, right? You guys know who my dad is? Yeah. Brian Buffini, top of the morning. Yes? <laughs> right, Guinness. Um, you all know who my dad is, right? Legend, was texting with this morning. He's 78 years old, doing an event right now in Dublin, right? Hanging out with all the Irish. They're all drunk. It's awesome. He and I were chatting this morning, and I'm like, you know what's different about this market, Dad? Because he's been doing it for like 48 years. I've been doing it for 34 years. I'm like, what's different is the heart has changed. The heart has changed and most people haven't adjusted. 
The heart has changed and most people haven't adjusted. They haven't adjusted their standards. They haven't adjusted their work ethic. They haven't adjusted their mindset. How many of you in this room built a team during the pandemic? Raise your hands really high. Did you fire them all yet? Because most of them don't understand this market, right or wrong. Especially if you got RDC and Zillow and everything else, because they're like, hey man, just hand me the lead. I'll put the hazmat suit on. I'll go sell a house. I can do this. But now when rates go to seven, and don't be shocked when they go to eight by the end of the year, maybe even nine, that's what they're talking about right now. Do you guys with me on this? And by the way, how many of you in this room are north of 60 years old? Raise your hands. North of 60. God bless you. How long in the biz? 20 years. Okay, so, but you'll remember. Do you remember when interest rates in like 1978 were 19%? My pops has an audio cassette program called Listing and Selling Real Estate in a High Interest Rate Market. And it starts like this. Hey, my name is Mike Ferry. Today we're going to talk about how to list and sell interest rates in the high market. By the way, with rates now dropping to 17, the market's on the move. And some of you are like, 7%? No one will ever buy. You have to change your standard right or wrong, my friends. Okay, do me a favor, look your buddy right in the eye and say, your head is a scary place to be. You know what I'm talking about. You know. Now, the second thing you got to understand is there's going to be no drastic rate change anytime soon. The banks are making a fortune. Are you guys all buying B of A and Wells and Chase Renee? Because right now, those stocks, like all the new construction businesses, Lennar, those guys are printing money right now. They don't care. So the rates aren't going to change. This is the new norm. If we get to 6, awesome. If it goes to 5.9, we'll all be in 7th heaven. But you will never see 2.25 again. You will never see 3 again. Never. Do you guys get that? I guess unless, I don't know, they engineer another pandemic. Then maybe we will, but we don't want that to happen. Number 3, there's no solution to inventory. No solution. No solution. None whatsoever. Do you guys with me on this? I was with my buddy Joe Hanauer yesterday. He's the Yoda of real estate. If you don't understand, he created a little company called Realtor.com. He used to own Cole Banker. He used to own one of the other ones, Better Homes and Gardens. Been around forever, 84 years old, worth a bazillion dollars. He's the guy that they ask at the Harvard Home Study thing to do a keynote on the market. We're chatting yesterday, and I said, Joe, when are we going to have houses? He said, never. He said, they're lying to the American public. It's not going to happen. The builders can't build fast enough, and the government's not smart enough to give the builders government subsidies and free land to start building more houses. He said, if they did that overnight, we would not have an inventory problem. But for right now, we're fucked. Number four, there's a massive wave of new competition coming your way. Massive wave, and more importantly, Simultaneously, there will be more consolidation, Brandon. It, by the way, congratulations on a thousand reviews on your Google page. Could you guys give my buddy Brandon over here a big round of applause? <laughs> thousand reviews on his Google page. And I remember when we were like in a hundred. And you did it, buddy. You did it. The consol don't I, I know some of my friends are in the room, and you may have noticed I am a little, I get excited. This is my favorite time to be in business. When everybody else is freaking out, this is when like Berkshire Hathaway is going to buy everybody. Anywhere, Realogy or whatever they're called now, they're going to buy everybody. Don't be shocked when Redfin is suddenly somebody else's. Don't be shocked if Compass sells or they buy Remax. Don't be shocked if Remax like goes from public to private because being public is hard. Don't be shocked by anything over the next 12 to 18 months. You want to know why, guys? Follow the money. The people that are going to consolidate and merge and buy everybody right now are going to buy on the cheap, and then what will they do later? Does that make sense? This is the single most exciting time if you're thinking the right way. But if you're in like, ha, huh! mode, you're already in trouble. I talked to all the CEOs. They're all, this, is, this is the question. Hey, man, who's for sale? Who should we buy next? What are you thinking about? Oh, they got $4 billion in debt? We can consolidate that. No problem, man. We'll amortize the shit out of that. We got this. That's how most people are thinking right now. And many of you inside the room are like, I don't know, man. How do I just go from like 200 deals to like 300 deals when you should be saying, how do I go from 200 deals to like 20,000 deals? Because most agents suck, right or wrong. Now, I'm not being disrespectful. I love all agents, but you all know the numbers. If you're in the U.S., there's 1.55 million agents, and only 400,000 are selling any houses. Do you guys know that? Half the agents in the, in the MLS right now have not closed a deal this year. They suck. You guys rock. Does that make sense? All right, but here's the thing I want you to get, and when you see it, I want you to say it out loud. Is that a golf course? 
Is that Southern California, Quail Hill? Florida, Florida of course. Florida. No state income tax. Awesome, huh? Gotta love it, man. Dude, I'm with you, man. I live in, I live in Texas and Wyoming. That's like, you, you, they give you money, right? And there's no taxes. It's awesome. Look at this. Bottom line, no one is coming to save you. No one is coming to save you. No one is coming to save you. No bailouts. No PP, PP money, none of that shit. It is all on you. Isn't that great? Isn't that exciting? These aren't trick questions. The answers should be very clear. That is some red hair. I grew up as a punk rocker in Southern California. I would come home with like black, picture me with like, like black hair. Like it's ugly, Opie and black hair and a mohawk. Now we can have blue hair, purple hair, and it's awesome, right? So I love it. Congrats. No one is coming to save you. Do you guys get that? No one is coming to save you. And here's the best part, Mike. You and I both know this. No one cares. If you never sell a house again, no one cares. Right or wrong, guys? Right or wrong? Because someone else will fit the void. Right or wrong? So you know what it tells me? We all need to be thinking way bigger. We need to be thinking way bigger. So even if you don't like me, and even if I say something that offends you, good. If I piss you off enough to say, I don't like that guy, but, but he's right. This is the time to make the moves. This is the time to start to grow because it is the Hunger Games right now. And there's only going to be a few survivors when it's done, right or wrong. You need to get all the food, all the ammo, all the money, and a bunch of buff dudes around you and kill everyone. Seminar's over. Have a great three days. But that's what's going, you guys with me on this? This is exciting. Now, you all know the stats. Take a photo of that if you don't know. You're all, I'm assuming, in the top one, at least the top 3%. We did a study of the entire MLS from last June to this June, call it July 1st. And by the way, if you're in the top, and this, by the way, this is the only thing that matters. Listings. It's the only thing that matters. Listings. Oh, I did a lot of buyer sales. Shit, anybody can do a lot of buyer sales. I mean, arbitrage, Zillow, arbitrage, realtor.com, actually call your past clients in Syria and ask for a referral. Anybody can do that. But right now in the U.S., we're only going to have 4 million transactions this year. 4 million. They just announced well, 4 million 40, right? That's the new forecast. And you watch by the time we get to December, you're going to see a three. You're going to see we're on pace for 3.9 million. So right now, we're going this way. We are declining in transactions, but that shouldn't make any of you nervous because there's still going to be $90 billion in paid in commissions. And if there's 3.9 million or, you know, 3.8275, who cares? How many do you do? And more importantly, how many listings are you going to take? Because that's the only thing that matters. Right or wrong, guys? Right or wrong, guys? Okay. But Tom, I, I built my entire business with a bunch of agents and we all sell a lot of houses and it's all buyers. Awesome. Every buyer is a future what? And if you're not working your sphere, which we're going to talk about a little bit today, you're already in trouble. But let me ask you this. Ever felt like quitting? Okay. Are you guys going to be this talkative the whole time? Dude, that is quite a mustache. That's legit. I was in Newport Beach having dinner a couple nights ago, and a bunch of like 27-year-old dudes with long hair show up, and they all got the cool stash. And I was like, man, it's 1978 again. This is awesome. <laughs> right? I like that stash. That's cool. And anybody that tells you you can't have a beard, you know, don't wear tattoos, just tell them to shut up. You with me on this? Because the world has changed, right or wrong. But now, be honest. Tell your buddy, lying is the devil. Tell your buddy the truth. Have you had at least one thought in the last 18 months of never doing this again as long as you're alive. Tell your buddy, tell the truth. Ever? Okay, so what if I told you, what if I told you, since the day I started my business, if you don't write anything else down, write this down in your notes. Are, how many of you in the room are a founder, like you're the CEO, you're the team leader, raise your hands really high? Okay, you all know this to be true. You only have two emotions every day. Two emotions, write it down, you'll want to put it on your bathroom mirror. Every day you can check in with your spouse and she can say or he can say, where are you? And you can just point. You with me? All founders only have two emotions. Ready? Ecstasy and terror. <laughs> that's it. You can say euphoria if that's better for you. It's ecstasy and terror every single day. How's your day going? Oh, my God, today's going to be a great day. Oh, the parking lot is empty. Everyone left. Shit, terror, right? Like that's every day. 
What have I told you? For 20 straight years in my business, starting the first four years, I felt like quitting almost every day. Right? I left a little family business. My dad, I got a business divorce. That's kind of awkward, right? And my wife and I, we start this new company. First year, we did a couple million dollars in revenue. Woo! I lost only a couple hundred thousand dollars in the process. Is everybody with me on this? Has anybody ever started a business before? Right? Next year, we get to $6 million. Yay! And I only lost like $100,000. Everyone else gets paid, right? But I'm the founder. And my wife is starting to look at me. Uh, Honey, it'd be nice if you started making some money. And I'm like, nobody makes any money for the first 10 years. That's just the way it works. I don't know if I was lying to her. (laughs) But she bought it. She understood, right? I go into the next year, 2006. Who remembers 2006? Yeah, baby! We got to almost $10 million. There's 31 million businesses in the U.S. Do you know that? 31 million businesses in the U.S. 96% of them make less than a million dollars a year in top line revenue. 96% make less than a million dollars a year in top line revenue. We got the 10 million, which is like the unicorn almost status. And then 2007 happened. Does anybody see where it went? And I was like this. Oh, starting over again. 2008. Okay, we got this. REOs, short sales. We can figure it out. 2009, I was like, screw it, man. This can't last forever. And weed will be legal in California eventually. So, like, it'll be okay, right? 2010, I decide, screw it. I launched a book that I wrote called Life by Design. We hit the New York Times bestseller list. And in the middle of euphoria, I still felt like quitting. I still felt like quitting. I would wake up in the morning and go, I don't even know where I am right now. Do you know what I mean? What hotel room am I in? What city am I in? What's going to happen today? Like, Like, we've all been there before, the uncertainty, right? 2011, look at, we're back on the rise. We're killing. 12 was the first year I went like this. (sighs) <sighs> the team's intact, right? We got the right systems. Things are starting to roll. My coaches are doing great. My wife is happy because there's money in the account, right? Like easy stuff, right? And then we go on this nice little run, and it was in 2015. I don't know if you guys have ever been there before. Um, tell your neighbor how old you are. This, you, kn- you know the number. Tell your buddy. How, how old are you, man? How old? 35, how old? 28? Okay, 70? Dude, right on. You know what's so great? So my mentor, Mike Vance, his mentor was Buckminster Fuller. Do you know who that is? Bucky Fuller, he's the one that created the geodesic dome in Orlando, right? One of the smartest guys on the planet. He said to my mentor, listen, you're not even going to know anything until you're 70. You with me? He's like, I know because I'm 84. Right? And he's like, I'm telling you, if you keep reading 300 books a year, you're going to learn something. Think about that. Think about that. How many books a year do you read? How many books do you, do you read every year? 20? Okay. You got to go to at least 300. <laughs> you got to go tonight and you got to Google the death clock. Do you know the death clock on Google? And you fill in about five or six questions and then it tells you the exact day you're going to die and then I want you to write it on your arm. You with me? Because when you get up to heaven or whatever you believe in, the first question they ask is, how many books did you read? That's the first question they ask. They don't care who you slept with. None of that stuff matters, right? Like everybody slept with everybody, right? What they care about is how much information did you take on and then what were you able to pass on to everybody else? Okay, I got three books up there somewhere. You got to read all three tonight. So you might want to write them all down. You guys ready? Read all these books tonight. First is Walter Isaacson's new book, the biography on Elon Musk. You got to read it tonight. It's extraordinary. I don't see you writing it down. Do you not read? Are you, are you that kid in school that just didn't take direction? Write this down. Open up the damn book. Let's go. You want to read that book tonight. You also want to read the book called Think Wrong. Think Wrong. Think Wrong. And the whole concept, it's the modern version of my mentor, Mike Vance, who talks about when the world is going left, you got to go right. If everybody's going left, you got to go right because the people that are always moving in one direction are always wrong. So you want to go the other way. You want to be the path taker. You want to be the one that is creating unique factors, the one that's creating something special that everybody goes, there she is. How did she do it? Let's go steal everything she did. You know, if you're not suing anybody, you're not doing anything right. Do you understand that? Because if you're really good, you create a bunch of really cool innovation, and then everybody rips you off, but because you keep plussing and enhancing, it's okay, but you sue them anyway. Does that make sense? That's the American way. Are you guys in business? Okay, let's keep going. The next book you got to read is J.D. Rockefeller's 28 Letters to His Son. 
J.D. Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller kind of gave the U.S. government Montana and Wyoming and Utah. That was a nice little gift. You know what he exchanged for it? I want to write the tax code. How cool is that? I'll give you three states. You give me the tax code for Wyoming. And he wrote the tax code, which is why all the billionaires live there. It is awesome. You want to read all three of those books tonight? The other two books you want to read tonight is, ready? The End of the World is Just the Beginning. The End of the World is Just the Beginning. It's a motivational book, as you can tell by the title. The End of the World is Just the Beginning. And what it talks about is population growth. Now, it talks about a lot of things. But the thing that matters most to us in real estate is what? Population growth. As long as there's more kids, homes will always matter, right or wrong. You guys with me? And then the other book you want to read, because the whole world is about cycles, and so is real estate, population growth and cycles, the only two things that matter, the book is called The Fourth Turning. The Fourth Turning. If you have not read The Fourth Turning, you're definitely not getting into heaven. The whole book is about, and you know it, it goes like this, weak people create bad times. Bad times create strong people. Strong people create good times. Good times create weak ass people. Where are we right now in the U.S.? Weak ass people. Where are we right now in real estate for the most? Not all of you, but you know what I'm saying. Where are we right now in real estate? Weak ass people. My uncle Frank was in World War II. He's the last survivor. He's 100 years old, paratrooped in on D-Day. My son right over here, Stephen and I, and my older son Michael, sat down with him. He showed us all of his medals. You know, this is when the scrap metal went through my leg, when the scrap metal went through my leg, Battle of the Bulge, Market Garden, went through all that stuff, right? And I remember asking him, why, why did you not go back? You could have gone back to Antioch. You could have been home back in Boston. Why did you go back? And he said, why would I leave my men? The mission wasn't done. And most of you won't even make phone calls. <laughs> Think about that. He went back into war, and most of us won't even call our clients. Think about it. Now, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, guess what? I still have moments where I feel like quitting. But it's in those moments, it is in fear and anxiety where we create inspiration. If you do not have fear, you are in a coma. Wouldn't it be funny if I just sat right there and did the balance of the seminar? <laughs> I would probably do it. If you don't have some fear, if you don't have some trepidation, get in your car and go 140 miles an hour. You will start to live. I promise you. Now, you can't do it in L.A. Don't worry. It's like four, right, on the 405 freeway. But if you're not doing things that get you outside of your comfort zone, most of the time you're just in a coma. Do you guys with me on this? How many of you know one agent right now that is in a coma? Boop, 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 and they're barely alive. Do you know someone like that? Are they sitting in your seat? <laughs> now, just being in L.A. is scary, right or wrong. Have you guys gone outside yet? <laughs> Holy shit, man. I was like, I've never been to Vietnam in a war, but that's kind of what it looks like outside. But, you know, for some people, that's awesome, right? So that's my two decades. That's my mentor. I wish you all could meet him. If he was here, you would love him a lot. In the middle of, like, 2002... I hired him to, we didn't call it coaching back then, he was my mentor. I paid him $48,000 a year, and I said to him, I just want to be around you. Now, just for context, his former other mentees are people like Steve Jobs, Norman Branker, Jack Welch, and Mother Teresa. You guys with me on this? So could you imagine being a young guy on the phone and saying, hey, how was your last two rendezvous with your buddies? And he's like, Steve's doing great, but we're trying to figure this out. Do you have any ideas? Do you realize how intimidating that is? And then he would say to me, you know, ha, 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 and he would always laugh. You know, ha, ha, you're one of my protégés. You better do something big. That's pressure, right or wrong. He invented the salad bar. Next time you're at the salad bar, you could just say, thanks, Mike. He invented that. He also helped create the fajitas. Do you guys know fajitas? Like, you know that wasn't actually Mexican food. Do you guys know that? A guy named Norman Brinker from, like, Dallas in a little think tank, they created the fajitas. It's fascinating. You should read everything you can. But I was at a crossroads, right, before I showed you that little not quitting. And I said to him, Mike, what do I need to do? And he said, why don't you come meet with me? I'll, you know, I'll be your mentor. I'll, I'll walk you through some of the stuff. And I was like, cool. I get out there, I fly from L.A. to Miami, and we're in at the Fountain Blue. You guys ever been to the Fountain Blue Hotel in Miami? Have you guys ever been to Paris? 
Who's not been to Paris? Go tonight. There's a direct flight from LA. I'm serious. I don't, how many of you are single? Raise your hands really high. Go to Paris, get laid, have fun, drink some good wine. Like, it's awesome. You, I mean, like, no, because that's where you'll create some tension, especially if you're married. You'll create some tension <laughs> and anxiety because you're going to have to explain yourself. He said to me on the very first sit down, I said, hey, Mike Vance, you, you, you were mentored by Walt Disney. That was like his first great boss. Last nine years, extraordinary experience. What did Steve and, and what did they all have in common? And he said, oh, now you got to get it. It's 930 in the morning. We're at the Fountain Blue Hotel. We're on our second glass of wine and Cuban coffee. Has anybody ever done Cuban coffee before? You guys ever done cocaine before? Same thing, one you sip, right? Like, I mean, I am jacked. You, you know what I'm talking about, right, yellow pants? You know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Like, I mean, I am like, I'm like all jittery, and then we're drinking wine to kind of mellow it out and get our brain working. And I said, so what are they all? He goes, they've all answered the five questions, and they live by them. Now, I have 21 questions that I've written out for him. And what do you think I did immediately? What do you think I did? What do you think I did? I, I turned the page and said, what are the five questions? Now, I'm going to warn you, because I'm not going to go through them all. You're just going to take a photo of it, but I'm going to tell you what he said to me. Now, Tom, here's what's going to happen. You're either going to create something extraordinary, or you're going to go to India, and you're going to smoke weed, and you're going to live to be 120. And I was like, those are some deep questions. Those are the five questions. Take a photo really fast. I've got to hurry up. I dare you to answer them. You can't. It'll be hard. Your ADD brain will stop you. The ones that matter are all five. They all should be named number one. What's your purpose? Why are you on this planet? How about that for an easy question after two triple espressos and a glass of wine? Why are you on this planet? Look at question number four. What is the dent in the universe, Jill, that you're going to make besides hiring an extraordinary young man eight days in real estate at the follow-up boss conference, my son, Stephen Ferry? Let's go, baby. Let's go. Working for one of my dearest friends, Jill Biggs, number one in all of Hoboken and New Jersey, right? So you answer those questions. Now, don't take it lightly, dude, with the pink shirt, because that shit's transformational. That shit got me to look my dad and my best friend in the eye and say, it's time for me to go right. I know the whole family's going left, but it's time for, and you can't be mad, because he was your mentor first, and you introduced me. And you knew what you were doing. You knew you were going to stir the pot. You knew you were going to get me fired up. I answered all those questions, and then it was totally obvious. I'm going to build the biggest coaching and training. I'm going to be all over the world. We have clients in 29 countries now. Everything that I wrote down in that initial session, we've achieved. Now, it took me 20 years, but who cares? You're going to die, right? You're going to live? you got to live. And you only live if you're in tension and stress and pressure. That is the only way you live. Does that make sense? My wife, two bouts of cancer. Me, one bout of cancer. Had two kids. They're both fucking crazy. You with me on this? That's living. Does that make sense? Some of you aren't getting it. All right. So I'm going to show you what you have to do during the entire conference. This could be the most important video you watch. It sets the tone for what we're going to do. Everybody listen carefully. All right. Today we're going to talk about how we can find out and how much we can find out and what it takes to get there. So first we have to decide how much do we want to find out. So let's say in this case, I want to find out at a level of seven. Okay, so I find that level on my graph and I come horizontally to my gradient line. Where it intersects with my gradient line, I'm going to come straight down to where it intersects with my fuck around line. That there is going to tell me how much I have to fuck around to find out what I need to find out. See, as you can see, the more you fuck around, the more you're going to find out. And also, if you stay down here and you never fuck around, you'll never find out. So I hope this lesson is helpful. Thank you. Right? So, so why are you really here? Why are you really here at one of the best conferences? To fuck around and find out. Does that make sense? Now, how many of you are married or have a significant other? That's not what I mean, <laughs> just in case. You know, real estate conferences, alcohol, sex. All right. So say that out loud, please. So ask yourself this question. 
ask yourself this question. You guys remember this company? Okay, who killed them? Okay, so Blockbuster, do you guys know this company? Anybody still miss them? I still miss them, the pinwheel. I could be like emailing someone and having a full conversation with people. The textiles, and who were they disrupted by? Do you remember the nerd fest when Steve Jobs was like, it's a phone and it's email and it plays music. And everybody was like, oh, and they just threw bags of money at him. And overnight, BlackBerry was gone. Couldn't recover. Could not recover. That's what's happening in real estate right now. Now, here's the thing. If your name starts with a B, BlackBerry or Blockbuster, you need to leave the industry. Because clearly, especially, like, I'm just saying, like, so change your name. All right, let's keep going. So here's my first question for you guys. What is your strategy for AI right now? It is the only question on the minds of every CEO, every critical thinker I'm talking to is asking themselves this question. What is my strategy for AI? How am I going to take all the AI tools, implant them into my operation, into my business, not so I can fire everybody, though many people are, but instead so I can take Mark, my chief staff writer, and instead of him writing one or two blogs, you know, maybe per week, now he's writing 10 per day. Does that make sense? We're putting everything on steroids right now, and some of you don't even have ChatGPT on your phone. Can you fucking believe that? You don't even have, you don't even know what Opus Clip is. You have a videographer and they're spending 14 hours editing versus 14 seconds. This is what's happening right now. So tell your buddy very quickly, what is, you're the CEO of your business, what is your strategy for AI going forward? Tell your buddy real quick, go. Real fast, what's your strategy? All right, so I'm going to take that as some of you said, you go first. <laughs> I don't know. Now, shh, let me give you a hint. How many of you know he doesn't live too far from here? How many of you have the name Dr. Peter Diamandis? Okay, so three of us. So I was texting with Peter this morning. He's keynoting for us in Chicago, right, in, in like a week. So we're texting back and forth about what we want to discuss. Peter created the X Prize. His buddies are like Elon Musk and all these crazy thinkers, the Google guys. Um, most importantly, people like Astro Teller, right? Can, could you imagine being a, like, hey, honey, let's name our child Astro. <laughs> now, Mr. Teller, his dad, was a part of the team that did the neutron bomb. You with me? So, so you would name your child Astro, like if you were potentially going to destroy the earth, right? So here's the thing. If you don't have a strategy today, you need to start listening to Dr. Peter Diamandis, listen to his podcast, read the book tonight called EXO, it's Exponential Organizations, how 100 years ago we would start a business, it would take 100,000 people to build a billion dollar business, then it went down to like 10,000 people right during the 90s because of technology and the internet, and then the guys at Instagram smoked weed, did it with 13 people. And what's happening now is, right now, thousands of companies are being started just connected to open AI, and they're building the next billion dollar business. And one of you in the room is thinking about it. One of you is asking yourself, how can I be the first to have a fully integrated AI solution through everything? And I'm gonna show you what's coming, and I might even give you a hint of what you should do about it, but let's talk. Here's the first thing you gotta get. 80 to 85% of the mundane tasks of everybody inside your organization, AI can do like that. 80 to 85% of all mundane tasks, entering a listing into the MLS, doing follow-up, sending out emails, sending out texts, creating video content that you don't want to do, but can you stand in front of a camera for five minutes and go, may I move dog face in the banana patch, A, B, C, D, E, and then guess what? The AI will capture your tone, your likeness, and then you can type the script and you will be on video. That already exists. Could you imagine if Walt Disney was alive? Can you imagine what he'd be thinking right now? Imagine if Steve Jobs was alive, what he'd be thinking about right now. That is so exciting. Now, here's what's fun. We're entering an area where you don't have to ask how anymore. It's all about who and what you want. You go to ChatGPT and you say, act like Mike Vance. 
I want to create an out-of-the-box solution for the way that I'm operating my real estate team. We currently look and smell like everybody else. I need 10 unique factors that no one else has ever thought of. Go. And you get like 30 ideas. And then you say, expand on each one of them. Make them, or make them more unique. I want people to say, the only place you can get this is you got to go to her. And it does it for you. Does that make sense? Now, it's not finished. It's just 80 to 85%. Then you got to flower it. you got to give it some love. you got to put your personality into it. you got to put your individualism, but you do it on top. But you don't have to sit in a whiteboard for three days anymore. You don't have to do ayahuasca to figure it out. You with me? Some of you have done it. All right. So you got to learn all those. Take a photo of it really quick. That's your homework tonight. After you read all those books, go to all those sites. There's just a few on there, like 120. And what I want to remind you of is it's 120, and that slide's like two months old. Because guess what it looks like now? Take a whole extra ring and go all the way around the outside. And then take another ring and go around that outside. And then another ring. It's kind of like Rome. It's a little Roman city. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And you got to learn them all. But here's the deal. You've been here before. Don't get freaked out. Remember when Ask Jeeves was a really cool search engine? Anybody? We're, we're across from what used to be the Stable Center, now crypto. How funny is that, crypto? Like, do, are they even making their payments? Like, what the fuck, right? But think about it, right? But we've been there before. What are we all on now? Which one? This is not a trick question. What? Your opinion, who are you now? Google, right? Same thing with dot-coms. I remember when there was a thousand when I launched MikeFerry.com in 1994. By the time we got to 1995, there was a million. Today, there's tens and tens of millions, but you only go, Don, to 12. Amazon. Uber Eats, your bank. You know what I'm talking about. Some of you, Pornhub. Look at the next one. Ready? <laughs> that was weird. Never said that before in a seminar. Edit that. Um, apps, right? Do we really need 500 apps that track you? No. But there's 500 apps that track you. Do we really need like 7,000 diet programs on an app? Do we, it's like everybody got fat and there's all this information, right? Like what the hell's going on? AI is going to be the same thing. You're going to center around on two or three. You'll center it on two or three, just like you've done with every other piece of technology. But the key is you got to find the ones that are right for you. It's like when people say to me, what's your favorite CRM? I'm like, follow up boss, boomtown. I go through my, my list. But it's like, it's like, ask me, what's your favorite car? There's a thousand different cars. you got to drive them all to figure it out. Does that make sense? You find the one or two, and then you just go hard on it. How many of you have kids that you're aware of? Who's got kids? <laughs> Raise your hands really high if you have kids. Heads up. My cousin, Cindy Transfaglia. Try that for a last name. I thought fairy was rough. Cindy Transfagula in Boston is a part of the teachers union in Boston. You can't get more anal than being a teacher in Boston and a part of the union. She said to me 18 months ago, we're all really nervous about it. I go, just wait, just wait. When it really unleashes in November when all the kids got ChatGPT, how do you think your older brother graduated from college? ChatGPT. He was like, I need you to write my final U.S. paper, but make sure that there's some little mistakes, but not enough mistakes, and make sure that no one would know that you wrote it. Go. And then he just partied his ass off for the last year, right? And now, guess what all the, guess what all the schools are doing? They're now teaching all the teachers how to use ChatGPT. Do you guys know the Khan Academy? Are you sure you have kids? The Khan Academy, Sam Khan? I just saw Sam Khan at the AI4 conference. Guess what he did? He took everything in the Khan Academy, connected it to OpenAI in partnership, and now making it free to the world, not just math, which is his skill set, but they want to completely revolutionize teaching as we know it. How? Yes, yes. Are you a former teacher? You're dyslexic. Oh, by the way, all dyslexic people with a little bit of HDHD, H, you know what I meant. We're the ones that are the most successful, so you're right on track. And by the way, when you speak to Siri, she doesn't know. All right, so check it out. You want to know what's going to happen in the next 18 months? You want to know what's going to happen in the next 18 months? I was wrong, by the way. Jill, I was wrong. Steph, I was wrong. I can't tell you about the company, why I was wrong, because I'm trying to buy it. But after the next U.S. election cycle, we're going to enter a new era. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to get a call. Hey, 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 man, hey, hey, this is Joe Biden. And you're going to have a full-blown conversation with Joe Biden. And then two seconds later, you're going to get, hey, it's huge, right? And you're going to have a full-blown conversation with Donald Trump. Their AIs are already working right now. And if you haven't figured it out, the U.S. government can call the do not call list. Do you guys know that? Isn't that cool when you write legislation 
to make sure you can do it, but no one else can. And the U.S. government, you're going to get, you mark my words, you heard it here first, you're going to get a phone call, and you're going to have a full-blown 20-minute conversation, hit every objection you can, scream at them, watch what happens, they'll never hang up, they will just keep conversing with you, they can handle your objections, and they can close, and they will ask your vote repeatedly. But what's really going to happen is you're going to figure out in the next 18 months that every single person inside this room is going to have their own AI, and your AI with your voice your tone will prospect, do lead follow-up, confirm appointments, handle negotiations with you, because they're better at it, because you'll say, act like Phil, or no, excuse me, act like Chris Voss and help me negotiate this transaction. And it'll do it for you in two seconds. That's what's gonna happen, people. You guys ready for that? Now, if you haven't read the, word, the, the book, The End of the World is Just, no, sorry, wrong book. I already told you to read that one. If you haven't read the book, Humans Are Underrated, read it tonight because it'll get you and your teams ready for what's coming. Humans are underrated. So I've given you like seven books. You're 70, you gotta read those in the next month and then text me and I'll send you some more. You with me? You guys got it? What's the book called? Guess what it's about? The five superpowers of humans that'll never be replaced by technology. Now the scary part is two of them will be replaced by AI. But last time I checked, the AI can't open the door and go on the listing presentation. But you will bring your AI with you. You will be Tony Stark and you'll be on a listing appointment. You'll say, let's ask Jarvis. You with me on this? That's what's going on right now behind the scenes. You guys ready for it? Tell your buddy if you're ready, yes or no. Yes or no, I can't hear you. I trust me. My buddy who runs this little company, the founder, you all know him, right? He gets it. Now, some of you, my friends, you've seen this video, so just bear with me for the 47 seconds. The rest of you pay attention. As I said earlier, our vision for our system is to help you get things done. It turns out a big part of getting things done is making a phone call. You may want to get an oil change schedule, maybe call a plumber in the middle of the week, or even schedule a haircut appointment. We think. AI can help with this problem. So let's go back to this example. Let's say you want to ask Google to make you a haircut appointment on Tuesday between 10 and noon. What that could also be a showing appointment. Is the Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. Now. That video is five and a half years old. That video is five and a half years old. Now, I can't tell you the name of the company, but you're gonna hear about something very soon that will right now have 10 to 40 minute conversations. You can pick the sex, you can pick the accent, you can pick the level of intensity, you can pick the disc profile. I'd like an S to make this phone call and walk the person through why they need to fill out the paperwork today and do it in a loving way. You can have a D call the person that never showed up to the office and fire them. You guys with me on this? And you can pick the accent, pick the sex, it already exists today, and the guys that started, I might be giving away too much, are living in Mark Zuckerberg's old house right now. And we're gonna take it for the entire real estate industry, so you're all gonna hear about it. And you're all gonna have your own AI that does everything for you, from transaction management, phone calls, email in real time. Let me schedule that appointment. Here, let me text you the address. And they text the property address in real time while the AI is talking. 
Turn to your buddy and say, it's 2023. Say it, it's 2023. This is exciting. All right, I'm gonna go a totally different direction. Yell out loud how big your team is. How many people? Yell it out loud. Yell it out loud, I can't hear you. Okay, you offer some coaching. In today's environment, either go really lean or go really uncomfortably large. Because a lot of you are stuck in the middle right now. And if you're active in the business and you're selling houses, what I would tell you is, if you love selling houses and you're a great listing agent, have the team be smaller. Have the team be smaller, you will make a fortune. But if you're spending all of your time going, got a minute, got a minute, got a minute, got a minute, no, but I got an hour, let's go, right? Like, because that's how it works. You either got to go really big or in this environment, make as much profit as you can being small. Does that make sense? You'll work your face off, but that's okay. You guys know what to do. So I'm making the argument, take a photo of that, just so you're clear. There's only four ways to make money in this business as a team, as a brokerage. There's only four ways to make money. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. And obviously, I'm, I'm taking ancillaries out because not all of you can do that. You either increase per-person productivity of your team. You recruit all the time. Say it out loud. You recruit all the time. You never stop recruiting because has everybody figured out that salespeople leave? Nine of you have. And you cry about it instead of having a recruiting machine behind you. So when they decide to leave, you say, I love you. Go out, figure it out. I'm going to keep following up with you because you're going to realize you left for a higher split or whatever reason you left. But this culture, this vibe, this jam, how we roll here, you got sexified by somebody. You'll be back. And if you're really good, they come back. Does that make sense? You raise your average sales price and you got to control your operating costs. If you're not making 30 to 38% profit, you're doing something wrong. Is everybody clear? Is everybody clear? If you're not making 30 to 38% profit, now you might say, hey, this is my side hustle. All my real money's in commercial real estate investments and all that stuff. So I needed a write-off. That's why I have my team. But I don't think that's the case for most of you. Now, that's an interesting question. As a leader, am I playing from the right tees? Do you even understand what that means as a golfer? Any golfers in the room? Right? You go to Scotland, and you know what they say? What's your index? And I say, 10-2. And they go, cool, you're playing from the whites. No, man, it's my first time at St. Andrews. I want to play from the tips. And you know what they say? You'd be playing from the wrong tees. You don't have the skill to go back there, and you'll slow everything up. Does that make sense? Well, it's the same thing in leadership today. If you're playing from the wrong set of tees because you don't have the skills to manage a 30, 40, 80, 200, 500 person sales team and a management team, then I say, go back down to the tees where you're comfortable and start to learn. Does that make sense? How many of you guys are with me on this? None of you, got it, okay. So either lean team or uncomfortably large. What is the uncomfortable number of salespeople for you on the team? What's the uncomfortable number? I was texting with a buddy of mine, Jason Mitchell. Some of you guys probably know him. Did 8,500 sales last year. He's got 770 salespeople on the team in 25 states. You know who I'm talking about. And he's a cool dude. He's a young guy. But you know what? He's super comfortable not knowing everybody's name. Think about that, 770 salespeople. He just bought, one of my client, Eric Eikhoff, just bought his office, picked up another 15 people right there, right? You either get really lean and extremely profitable so you can go do with your money what you want, or you get really big and you make all the money. Do me a favor, turn to your buddy and just, I want you to go like this, like, I'm gonna get really big, I'm gonna stay where I'm at and die, or I'm gonna get smaller and make a lot of money. Tell your buddy, I won't look, but you got to show your buddy. If you don't, they're going to hit you. What are you going to do? Big thumbs up. I know your founder. You guys better, right? Like I've talked to all those guys. You guys are with Humanize. Do you know Humanize? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Killer company. By the way, side note. Side note. Shh. See this one over here? Recruit all the time. Everybody write down the name of this company, and the guy's here somewhere in the room, so I'll give him a little shout out. The company's called Humanize. They... Source recruits, qualify recruits, schedule an appointment with a recruit, and then your recruiting manager shows up, and you get 12 to 15 a month. We're solving the industry problem, right? Solving the recruiting epidemic in our space. I don't know if Chris is inside the room. Chris, are you inside the room? Thanks, one of my friends not inside the room. Where are you, Chris? Are you in the room? Oh, he's way over there. Chris, stand up. 
you picked a really good spot. Everybody say, hello, Chris. Okay, find that guy, bald, tattoos, glasses, super handsome, want to punch him. All right. Now, let me give you the last one. What's the decision you've been resisting? Write it down. What's the decision that you've been resisting? What's the decision you've been resisting? That's the big question right now. So, Mike, I talk to CEOs all the time, right? Big, big companies, small companies, everything in between, people starting startups, tech companies, fintech. You know, it's, it's fun, right? You do something for three decades, you occasionally say fuck, some people get offended, the rest still call and say hey, right? Here's what's great now. Every single person I've talked to in the last, I don't know, 18 months has one decision they've been putting off. One decision. You know, do I fire that person? Do I buy that company? Do I sell or not sell? Do I go into that new market? Do I start the title company? Do I start the mortgage company? Every single one of them has one big decision they've been putting off. And here's the challenge, my friends. When you are stuck in that decision, what you have to understand, how many of you know a company called Zillow? You guys know those guys? Do you remember when they bought Trulia? It took them two years to recover from that. They wrestled with it forever. When they finally pulled the trigger, it took them two years to get back to innovation. They were stuck in the weeds trying to sort through who gets the job, who gets fired, what are we going to do with the leads, how are we going to organize it. Two years of essentially being stuck in the mud. No innovation happens when you're stuck in the mud. Make the decision. If you can't figure it out, my friends, you need to sit down with someone who's a strategic thinking partner and say, these are all my options, make a decision and move on. And by the way, most of the time, you will be wrong. So what do you do? You make another decision. You make another decision. But in this environment, if you're stuck, you're done. Fire the person. Hire the person. Take the leap. Get your heart going. Hire somebody really expensive who's really good, who's going to say to you, I'm going to get you to the next level. Give them a shot. It'll take 18 months. You'll be uncomfortable. You'll want to fire them. They'll be getting paid. You won't be getting paid. Do it anyway. Because this game is a game. And you're either in it or you're sitting on the sidelines. And when you're stuck in your head, you are not in the game. Do you guys get that? Do me a favor, with love and respect, turn to your neighbor and say, he is so talking to you right now. You with me? I, you know I'm talking to you, big dog. You know it. Now, I got a couple of minutes. I got to look. I got seven minutes. Do you guys want more listings? Man, how much did you all drink last night? Is it Dan? Where's Dan Corkle? Hey, by the way, can we give Dan and the entire follow-up team a massive round of applause? <laughs> massive. You guys have no idea, um, really, 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 who deserves a, also a massive round of applause. Where's Ricardo? Where's Ricardo? Okay, Ricardo. Give Ricardo an even bigger round of applause. Even bigger. You have no idea what it's like to throw an 1,100-person wedding. Because that's what this is. You with me? food and drinks and all that stuff. By the way, drink less tonight. I promise you the seminar will be better tomorrow and Tim Grover will punch you in the face if you're hungover. I promise. Now, in six minutes or less, what if, what if, what if we start to spend 80% of our time taking listings? What would happen? Ten companies would go out of business in your area tomorrow. Wouldn't it be rad if you could pick the company? <laughs> Phil, you're done. I know, you took all the listings. I know. It's because we figured it out. Everybody can get buyer leads, but everyone seems to suck at getting listings. And if we put all of our concentration, now I'm not saying stop working buyers. Why am I whispering? I don't even know. <laughs> Have two different divisions. Start another team, put a pirate flag up, put eye patches on them, and make them the listing team, and then give them the resources they need to go out and cremate the market. You guys with me on this? Go hire like 50 former recruiters. Go hire like 27 car salespeople. You with me on this? 
Because they walk in and they close. You with me? You give them a good presentation. I mean, if you can sell a Toyota, you can sell. You guys with me on this? If you drive a Toyota, get a new car, right? Like, <laughs> Jesus, life is short, right? Please. And if you drive a Prius, please get a Tesla. What if you went out and hired an army of people that might or might not be in your likeness because you're a really good listing agent, but guess what? You're a flavor, baby. I'm a flavor. You with me? Some people like Mike Ferry. Some people like the dude with the hat. Some people like uh, Jared James. Like, I'm a flavor. I get it. Does that make sense? It's why I got 237 coaches and 22 presenters. It's okay. You need the same. You need like 22 people on the listing team if you're in a small town, if you're in a big town or in multiple markets, have 22 in every one of them and don't worry that they don't all have a cool beard and great hair because some need to be older, some need to be younger, some need to be Latina, some need to be this, some need to be that. Are you with me on this? You got to serve the market. Does that make sense? Stop being so stupid and just kill everyone. Take over the market. You guys with me on this? I'm dead serious. Now, some of you... Some of you were like, he said, kill, a metaphor, <laughs> metaphor, when you write the review. He said, fuck four times and said, kill. All right. So how do we triple our appointments? I don't have to talk to all you smart people with a bunch of tactics. I'm just going to tell you, you need seven new ways that you're doing listing attraction. So you got, I'm making this up. You got Zillow, you got Google, you got Realtor.com, you got a home light account, you never call your past clients in Sphere, you got an old geographic farm that you stop working and you guys do some open houses, right? Now what we need is like at least seven ways, and this isn't even the good list, this is the tried and true shit. You're all doing this, right? You gotta have this first. You gotta have sold, home light, Zillow, Realtor. You gotta be doing direct mail with QR codes. You gotta be doing mega open houses like my buddy Andy C, who I was just with in Northern California. Andy C is so mad we published your case study last year. He is so mad. He's like, Stephanie Younger, she only did like 500 open houses. We did 680. He's the number one team in all of Silicon Valley, right? Last year, off year, $22 million in commissions. He got 12. The team got the balance. That's a good real estate agent, right or wrong, guys? I'm sorry, did you make $12 million last year? No, he lives in California, half taxes, right? But he still got six. He's divorced, she gets three. He's still got three, <laughs> right or wrong? I mean, you can't live on it. Could you imagine trying to live on $3 million a year? Could you imagine? That would suck. All right, so. Doing niche farming, agent agent referrals, Google advertising, marketing to non owner occupied. Um, all that stuff works. But here's the fun list. You guys want the fun list? Now, some of my friends, you're already working on the fun list. You better be working on number one. If you're not working on number one, I'm going to call your coach and I'm going to punch him. All right, you ready? This is the fun list. This is where the action is. Great job, by the way, on stage. I loved it. And have you sang the song yet? Um, my videographer is right here. We're working on okay, so if you don't tag me, you know I'm going to be upset because I'm holding you to that. Here is the list. If I was talking to you, you're talking to one of your coaches with us. We're going to start number one with the single biggest demographic. The single biggest demographic, I went the wrong direction, of where all the sellers are with all the money. All the money is with people that are 65 years and older. 38, almost 39% of every home in the U.S. has no mortgage. No mortgage. Another 32%, guess what? They are so equity rich. And where do you think they are? They're the baby boomers and they're the super seniors. And they're sitting on a fortune and you're trying to find a millennial to sell them a house they can't afford. What are you thinking? You're not. You're not thinking. You're not solving the problem. My older son, Michael, went to New York City with my buddy, Chad Cooper. And Stephen, you know this story. When he went, he went to go raise capital for a CEO. That's what my buddy Chad does. And Michael got to just sit and observe and watch as they pitched all of these big hedge funds, give us your hundred million, right? And I said to Michael at the London Hotel, right near, now kind of close to where you live now, and in New York City, sitting at the bar with my son, I said, son, what'd you learn going on these pitches trying to get a hundred million dollars at a pop? He said, I learned what side of the desk I want to sit on. Now, some of you got that. He said, I want to be getting the offers, not writing the offers. You guys with me on this? Yeah. So, number one, look at that, a fridge magnet. You want to put a fridge magnet with your face and phone number on it. Someone that's 75 will do that. Someone that's 32 won't. Guess what? List and buy underbuilt lot zone for R2 with a single family residence on it. And then you know what you do? You buy it. You buy it with a builder. 
you arbitrage some of your buddy's money, you refinance your house, and you buy that, and then you build seven houses, and now you've got inventory. Does that make sense? Why in the world would you work for 2.5% when you can make 15 15% is what's available when you buy those lots and you build those new houses and you make them affordable. You're a star. The mayor will give you a ribbon. It'll be awesome. Do you guys get that? Expired listings because of who you are in the market, because of your brand. Help those people. You know they listed with some guy named Phil who's three counties over? You know what I'm talking about. You go on the MLS, you're like, who are these people? How are they getting the listings? The answer is NAR's report. 62% of all the sellers are picking an agent based on proximity. So they're drinking with Phil three counties over, and Phil says, I can list your house, doesn't matter where it is. I'm going to throw it in the MLS and Zillow and everything else, and it'll sell, don't worry about it. And the property expires, and they should have listed with you. That's my opinion. So that's the other list. I love Amy Stockbarger too. Airbnbs right now. Airbnb, bless you. Airbnbs, right? Isn't it funny? I'll say fucking, I'll say bless you, right? <laughs> Airbnbs, because of all the legislation change, New York City, Jill, what just happened? New York City, no more Airbnbs. Oh, man, you want to talk about a lot of listings? Right or wrong, guys? You need to be watching the legislation. Somebody said to me yesterday, I was doing a talk for a couple thousand people on Zoom, and they're like, I think you should do this. And someone's like, I don't know. Where do I find the list? And in the middle of the webinar, I went like this. Where do I find the list of Airbnb owners? Oh, listbroker.com. Got it. Go to them. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So as I wrap, I'm going to give you guys, that's my Uncle Frank over there at the far right corner. You guys with me on this? Still owns his house. Bought it for $12. Lots worth a million six. Zoned R2. I can't give you guys all this stuff right now, but if you want all this stuff, because they're trying to kill you, by the way. If you want all this stuff, just read that. Every Ziller Cello lead is a buyer we abandoned. Do you guys with me? Okay. Yep. So as I wrap, look up here. This is a rad conference. It's a rad conference because there's really cool people in the room. You know all the people you're sitting next to, right or wrong. Don't talk to them while you're here. You already know their confirmation biases. You already know the stuff they're going to say. You already know why they're going to say, I can't believe the Tom Ferry said call expires. I would never call expires. You already know that shit. <laughs> Go meet interesting different people. Go have meals with different people. Go have drinks with different people. Or don't drink at all and watch what happens. It's funny to be in a room with real estate agents that are hammered. <laughs> when you're sober, it's really funny. And get your camera out, film it all, because they'll give you referrals for the rest of your life because you got the shit on them, right? <laughs> Y'all with me on this? Like, this is the game, right? Like, referrals forever. So as I wrap, I just want to say first to my son, who's sitting inside the room, congratulations, welcome to real estate. I'm super proud of you. I love you. To my friend Jill, who hired him, thank you. Kathy and I really, really do appreciate it. And if we have to buy a house to get the first one done, we'll do it. Like, we're in, right? And my friend Steph and so many people that I know inside this room. But most importantly, I want to thank Dan and his partner, for being risky, when everybody was going this way, they said, let's build a world-class CRM. And unlike everybody else that tries to do a thousand things, let's just teach people one killer CRM. You guys with me on this? Can we give them a big round of applause? All right. As I leave the stage. My team and I are here for the next couple days. I'm sure there's a booth out there that probably says Tom Ferry. If you want a copy of all of the slides and a whole bunch more goodies, go see my buddy Anthony out there and just give him a card and say, send me all the shit. Is that cool? Is that cool? All right, I'm out. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you.